Wow. Hey everyone, Matt Thomas here. Thanks for watching. Um, so recently I sent you guys a video about uh, great ways to begin class. And so I wanted to do a video on great ways to give alternative final assessments. And the final assessments could be like, you know, big final project, like a semester project, an actual, you know, the final, the official final, or it could be just um, final projects within a unit. So final could mean whatever you want it to mean. Um, and, and they're just as purposeful and, and hopefully, you know, enjoyable for the students to, to, to do. Um, I also uh, linked the great ways to be in class video on the slideshow there. So feel free to, to click that if you want to see the video from a few weeks ago. Uh, let me preface a, uh, this first. So let me preface this video by saying these will take patience at first, right? Like if you've never done any of these type of projects, don't let fear stop you. Um, and don't worry about messing up because you know, that will probably happen, right? When you try something new, it's like, oh, I really messed this up. But if you really like it, and, you know, try it again next year and, and adjust it. Um, I think one of the issues is, like, you know, trying something new. Like, I don't want to mess it up. And when it, maybe it doesn't go the way you planned it. And so maybe you're like, I'm just going to scratch, you know, scrap it forever. Like, no, maybe, you know, try it, see what happens. Um, you know, uh, have a little patience, you know, and, and see how it goes. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but at least you tried. Um, you're not going to be doing your students a disservice or holding them back if you do a, a different assessment rather than just giving them a test, right? You're not really going to impact their, 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 their education. So um, uh, feel free to, you know, take a risk and try these if you'd like. Um, most of these finals will take some time. So like if they're project based, you know, slow down, teach fewer concepts, give more opportunities to demonstrate knowledge. Um, a lot of these, you know, won't take one period. They'll take multiple periods. So kind of, you know, schedule that in. Or they could take one period. The, the thing is, when I do these, uh, when, I, when I give you these uh, finals, um, it, you can take them however you like, right? I, this is definitely not a video on how to do these. This is a video more on like, this is what you could do. And then you can format it however you'd like. Um, some of these you're going to need to have already established a good relationship with your class uh, or an effective, you know, foundation for learning. Definitely trust in your classroom. You'll see some will really take some trust between you and your students. Others, not so much. You can apply them to any of your classes. Uh, some may seem childish, right? Some may seem like, like, uh, um, you know, oh my gosh, seriously, like, I'm, I'm supposed to do that? They maybe seem childish, but, you know, kids, learning learning was fun at, at one point, right? And so uh, learning is fun, and people learn the most when they're having fun. So feel free to, to, to try this, you know? Um, before giving a final, or even these alternative final assessments, uh, it's always good to know your purpose. What's your purpose? Is your purpose that your students memorize the information and forget it? Or is your purpose that they have purposeful learning or lifelong learning or whatever it is, right? So, so identify the purpose of your final before giving it. Um, and some of these will not fit your personalities, and that's okay. Um, there are some that I put up there that I'm like, I, would, I wouldn't do that either because it doesn't fit my personality, but I would totally do this other one. So find the ones that fit your personality. I'm a big believer in that. Uh, and these are suggestions, not how-tos. So this video, hopefully, will go very quickly because I'm just presenting you the idea, not showing you how to do it. Uh, because how to do it is, is going to be really up to you and how you want to you know, uh, set it up for your classroom. Um, and the thing about projects, students really don't forget projects. They won't remember the test they took back in fifth grade, but they'll remember that one project they did with that one teacher. So that's why projects are, are always great. So anyway, let, let's get right into it. Um, before I go into the final assessments, let me talk about tests and testing. Um, you know, essentially, are tests accurate indicators of intelligence and or long-term success? So that's difficult to say. The results are mixed because it's difficult to define, define intelligence, right? It's difficult to define long-term success. And it's very difficult to measure the long-term success. So from the multitude of articles that I've read, um, I could easily say, no, tests are not indicators of long-term success. But that, they, that may not necessarily be the case. I could say that, yeah, totally, tests are the way to go. But that's not necessarily the case either. It is mixed. Um, some articles will suggest that test success more is about personal work values not intelligence, not long-term success. If you if you work hard and study at a test, you're probably more likely to, you know, either get up early or focus uh, your effort on certain things or are consistent with, with effort, whatever it is, right? Um, test success tends to equate to other parts of your life. It just means you're successful at most of the things you do. Uh, some people will argue test success equal more learning opportunities in life. 
I don't know if I buy that, but I was reading articles that suggest that. Um, what other articles will say is tests, tests give unnecessary anxiety. So a test could be like a, a whole big issue uh, uh, with other things. Like people will say like they're not good test takers. And again, I don't know if I buy that so much because now you have to identify what a good test taker is. But I do, uh, I will say that, that based on neuroscience and psychology, um, that tests will give an unnecessary anxiety to some people, which could definitely impact their, um, their amygdala, their, their, um, their neuroscience part of the brain. Like they, they may not do well on tests because they're nervous about them. Um, and, and of course the whole memorize and forget because the brain does delete information that they don't find relevant. It doesn't, you know, find relevant for keeping, uh, some, some articles will suggest that education is just a school thing. Cause there's not really any professional test takers out there, right? For a job, we're preparing these students to take tests. Uh, there's no jobs out there where they are need to prepare to take tests. Um, for the most part, I mean, I'm generalizing, of course. So it's kind of just an education thing that we, we value tests and the real world doesn't, uh, too much studying does have diminishing returns. There's studies that show that, um, I, I tests do have their place, uh, maybe just not the end-all be-all. So that all being said, it's probably taking me longer to set up this, this stuff than it actually will be for me to talk about. It. Okay, first let's start with math. So um, I now first of all I'll tell you I'm not a mathematician, so conceptually a lot of the stuff, like I, I it would make more sense better to, better to mathematicians, but building concepts out of Legos, right? Uh, uh, demonstrating mathematical concept with Legos. Now I have links here to these articles. Right? How to use Legos in math as far as doing assessments. Uh, next one. Creating fake social media accounts for characters or for science. So if you're doing, uh, let's say you're finishing a novel in English class, you're doing characterization and quotes and reactions. Maybe you have the students create fake social media accounts and have them react the way they normally would that's consistent with the story. You could create social media pages for history or government, have them react the way they would based on their perspective. Of, of history. Um, if it's science, like imagine photosynthesis going on vacation, like what would they post and how would they post it? And are they lying on the beach, drawing in the sun, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a scientist. I hope I'm not messing photosynthesis up. But anyway, there's uh, there's a link to a fake book, which is an educator's Facebook. Uh, there's also a canvas page with a bunch of different links for, for Twitter or fake Twitter and fake book, etc. So another one, let your students teach via YouTube. So I know many teachers have done the um, students teaching a lesson at the end of the year, and, and which is fine, right? Everybody does it, though. It's one of those things where it's like, all right, maybe it's played out a bit. It's not bad. But students do tend to get nervous. Um, they stress over it, getting in front of others and, you know, whatever. Have them create a YouTube style video demonstrating something, right? Something that they know really, really well. Uh, I wouldn't do it in too many people, maybe partners, maybe three at the most, but they could do it live too. But, you know, of course, there's the nerves thing. But, uh, yeah, cr like having them teach vid via a YouTube video or create a video uh, demonstrating a mastery of something. Um, okay, I love this one. Uh, let your students write the final. Funny questions at all. Uh, and all. And, and I used to do that when I would give tests, like for back in like the early teaching days when I would do tests for like novels and stuff. I used to let the students write the, the test questions. Um, and, you know, most students write what they know. Like the test questions will be ones that they know. Uh, and of course, you get final approval, but f they're going to write some funny ones. Leave those funny ones in. Like make that a part of the test. Make that, create that dopamine so that when the students are taking your test and they see a funny one, they're going to laugh and they may be anticipating another funny one coming up. Leave those in there. You know, have fun with this stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I always love that. I, I think it's, uh, uh, if you're one that, that does give a lot of tests, let your students write one. Have them take a day to write questions up and review the questions and, and put them in there and including any funny ones they put in. Um, have the students write and perform a play uh, or whatever. So it could doesn't have to be a play, some type of performance. This may, may tie into English, but if you're doing maybe science, you could have the students demonstrate uh, a scientific method. Uh, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but demonstrate something that has to do with science, right? Um, but if you're teaching Romeo and Juliet, uh, you know, plays are meant to be watched, not meant to be read. But rather than giving them a test on what a soliloquy is, have them write an entire play uh, or a scene, but I'm more into the, the entire, you know, the entire uh, uh, project rather than just pieces of it. Have them write a play and perform it in class. Um, create a board game. So here's a link to a template, a video that will explain like there's a there's a, a digital template out there. Or if you're our history class, maybe you're having him demonstrate uh, um, 
uh, locations for war and things like that. If you're uh, an English class, maybe you're doing different things like the Odyssey and, and doing some type of journey, heroic journey game. A uh, board game can be used in, in, in many different subjects. Write a rap. So any, any subject that has um, uh, vocab in it, right? Have the students write a rap that uses all the terms you need the students to know. Earworms are great for memory. They really are. And if you guys are, do you remember the rap guy who won Teacher of the Year um, in San Diego, like, I don't know, 12 or 15 years ago? I don't know what he's doing now. But at the time, it was innovative, right? He would rap his math, and everyone loved it. Uh, and he would do seminars about how to, to rap for math. And, um, you know, yeah, have your students write a rap. Next one, create a society, like an entire society. I think this would be great for history, for English if you're doing a dystopian novel. You could focus on propaganda posters and uh, um, critical thinking, problem solving, writing, demonstration of knowledge. Uh, it's it creating this perfect society or a society that, with your certain values or whatever. Um, this could be a very, very valuable tool, uh, especially, like I said, English class or, or uh, history class. Create a year-end collage that represents all that the students have learned, right? So, so it's a reflection or a revisit, as opposed to at the end of the year, you know, just going through your units and then whatever unit six is, but you forgot all the, what was in unit one, have them go back and revisit all that's been learned and make a collage out of it. Um, put someone on trial. There's another uh, one. Like this is, this is great for um, speaking and argumentative writings and so on. Uh, if you're doing the Odyssey, it's a good one for the Odyssey. Um, there may be other uh, opportunities, novels, of course, putting someone on trial, history classes, putting someone on trial. Um, uh, let's see. something. Okay, this one, I, I, I was reading an article of someone that did this, but I'll be honest, I don't know how to do it, so I'm just going to say it. Um, creating a video game exam. And um, there was there was a couple different articles on on. Now it wasn't how they did it, but what they did. And I'm sure some of you are gamers and you have programs that you can create a video game exam for. Uh, gamification, right? That was a big thing a few years ago. Collaborate with another teacher for a final project. Cross -cur 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 curricular instruction, which is one of the best uh, instruction uh, 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 strategies to use. Not my opinion. Supported by neuroscience and psychology. Um, get together with the teacher. Give. Give your students, give all of your students, multiple opportunities to demonstrate knowledge over a few concepts, right? Do a, do a, a collaboration final. is always a great thing to do. Um, do an in-class science fair. Now, before you go, dude, seriously, this isn't seventh grade. This is awesome. Like, students love that stuff in seventh grade. And, and the strategy works. Just have them update to high school stuff, right? So I have a link here of different science project examples. It's actually a really cool link. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely have them demonstrate something they've learned all year, just like a big science fair at the, at the end of the year. Kids, again, students love projects. Uh, so those are, those are it from the ones that I, that I looked at um, as far as research-wise. And then I, I, asked, I asked you guys to send me some of yours that are kind of outside of the box as well that, you, that you'd like me to share um, with others. And so this is a great one. I love this one. This is for seniors. This is a sen senior en uh, English teacher, uh, Miss Billions. Um, and she said it was okay that I said her name. So uh, she, I, thought, I thought this was awesome. So seniors, right? So on your way out, right? Um, what's more impactful? A test about whatever novel they were reading or something that could apply to real life. So she's asking them to annotate a children's book, either their favorite children's book or any children's book that they have. Identify moral and theme. But the, the, the more, the bigger picture is to, is to pull out the lesson, the life lesson of this book. And apply it to their adult life, and and how um, how it could you know set them up for success, right? Um, the way she's doing it is is incredible too. It's going to be kind of in a relaxed environment to present. Um, and I will say too, for those of you who I, I I'm presenting you know sharing these, uh, I I'm probably not going to do it give it ju justice as, as great as you will. So I apologize if I'm leaving things out. I love this one though for seniors. Um, this was given to me by Dr. Tomasian. Um, I love this one too. So, so it was it was essentially titled "What Does It Mean to Be Alive Biologically," and it was um, given. She she would give uh, three objects to her students: one alive, one recently alive, one not alive, and they had to design, carry out experiments to determine which one was which, and then explain and justify their answers. And I love that because it was application. Um, I also loved it because it was argumentative. I mean, not argumentative in the sense that you're giving an opinion, but it's opinion supported by facts, right? So it was, you could argue if she 
you could apply this with an English teacher as far as creating arguments, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, maybe even this could be even a bigger project. I thought that was really cool. Um, but write, draw, verbally explain their answer. I thought that was amazing. Student preference, uh, you know, demonst multiple paths to demonstration, you know. And, and this, this is a type of assignment that can be used for other science uh, 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 subjects or lessons, sorry, as well. Not just, not just this particular one, but essentially doing experiments on, on different things to come up with different uh, uh, conclusions. So I, I love this. I think it was a great one, too. Uh, someone emailed me this, uh, Ms. Buck. I thought this was amazing. Uh, escape rooms. Now, I'll be honest. I've never done an escape room. And when she emailed this to me, I'm like, dude, this is cool. Like, I, I don't know how to do it, but this is awesome. And so I put a link up here. So students essentially solve a series of problems to get clues or codes to the next problem. And they work their way through all this to, to the big final outcome. Um, and again, I won't explain how to do it because I, I don't know how to do it. But I wanted to at least share the idea with you and allow your imagination and your creativity to run wild with this. So uh, Mr. Lundstrom did this. I loved it. I, I think this is amazing. He gives the final a little early, and then he gives it again for those who don't do well, for those who aren't happy with their score, and then again, and maybe again, right? And so the, the whole purpose is like, hey, if my goal is for you to demonstrate the knowledge and for you to learn the knowledge, um, I'm going to allow you to, I'm going to not only allow you to retake the final, I'm going to give the final again until you feel that you've demonstrated the knowledge that you're happy with. I thought that was incredible. Um, and so, yeah. So, uh, f review, really quick review. Um, using Legos to represent math, creating fake social media accounts for, for characters, uh, or for science as well. Let your students teach via YouTube. Let your students write the final, including all the funny questions. Have the students write and perform a play, um, or whatever, right? A scene from something. Create a board game, write a rap, create a society, uh, create a year-end collage, put someone on trial, uh, create a video game exam, collaborate with other teachers for a final project, do an in-class science fair, um, and and yeah, that's all I got. So yeah, feel free to have fun with this stuff, right? We, it, we know our, our purpose is for the students to learn the material, and they will learn if they're enjoying what they're doing. So have fun, try these. If, if you try one, let me know how it goes. Right. And again, don't be afraid to try it. And if it messes up and you still like it, try it again. Adjust the way you, you, you give it or, or scrap it and go on to something else. So thank you so much for watching.